Got the hump? No, no, of course not. No, I can't remember the last time I felt so. Well, this is the winner at Newmarket. All the lottery numbers. The keys to Fort Knox. <laughs> it's cute how all your romantic metaphors are to do with money. Shows how much I value you. I'll let you. I sense a serious question. It is really over with that Sergei bloke, right? Very over. It was never like us. I mean, whatever went wrong, we did have a marriage. Still do, legally. This time it's for good, yeah? I want this to be forever. Only... I don't think I could take it... Friends of yours, then? Yeah, mates. Yeah, I've had mates like that. Like piranhas. Piranhas eat you. Exactly. They do that, you ought to blow their heads off with a cannon. Good idea. They said I didn't have a dad. They call me names. Please don't tell Mum about them. If you do, she'll send me back to London. All right, then. That's it. OK. Bye. Bye. Yes? I was just thinking, if you do want this, us, to work, I could be really involved in your life. Our life. We could give it another try. Right. You could have your own little sideline. An old wine bar. You've always wanted to run one. I could help at the office, too. And if a wine bar gets going, I could handle the business side of that on my own. If you don't mind. Mind? Holly, it's brilliant. And it's tax deductible. Oh, Tony. Thanks very much, Patrick. A uh, moment alone with you. In here. Once I do stand down, the job's yours, I guarantee it. The lady mayoress, she's going to love it. Uh, nothing. Yes. I'll be mayor. Excellent. So who else do I have to impress? I mean, 
Yours isn't the only vote, is it? Mainly the Finance Committee. They're the power base. At the meeting tomorrow, flex your muscles a bit. Right. Show them you've got clout. Right. I know. I'll make Mr. Nichols jump through a few hoops, eh? <laughs> well, you know me, Stanley. I'm not a yes man. Once I am mayor, I make my own decisions, right? Of course. And any favours you do me or anyone else, they're for the good of the community. The way it's always been. Of course. How's your mum, Steve? Apart from being in prison, fine. Give her my love. We're all thinking of her. I think she's thinking fast. It'd take the devil himself to keep Rita down for long. Speaking of which... Tea, coffee, strychnine. It's not before lunch, thanks. Anyway, this isn't a social call. Thank the Lord for that. More of a private matter? She's my PA. I'm his PA. Suit yourself. I've been doing a bit of digging, and I've discovered that the lease on this place comes up at the end of the month. Your point being, I've renewed it for the past 25 years without any bother. Change will probably do you good, then. No, I've been looking to open a wine bar for a while now. And this is the perfect site. Need to take it out market a bit, of course. So, I'm going to make a bid for the cafe. You're joking. He's not. But this is my cafe. Everybody knows that. This is my life. Please, let's not get too thespian about this, shall we? Anyway, I'm doing you a favor, letting you know about it in advance to soften the blow. I could have just done it. Done what? Deprive Elvis of his livelihood, rip the heart out of this community. He wants to take this place up market, put in a poncy wine bar for yuppies. I put this community on the map. Oh, please, don't fight me on this. You're not in the same league. All I've got to say to you is council meeting. Yeah, but I don't have to be there, do I? It's just rubber stamping the accounts. Oh, not anymore. Things have got too sloppy around here. Just be there tomorrow and bring him. Yeah, all right, I'm not one of your town all suits, you know. Just be there with your budget all documented and accounted for. Otherwise, it might get cut. Maybe something superfluous will have to go. Like him. Have a nice day. Traumatic birth. I think his mother must have had steel fallopian tubes. If I lose the cafe, what will I do? Don't worry, we'll fight this all the way. I'll give you the key to the gun cupboard. I need some air. I've got things to do. I'll look after the cafe. But don't worry, Elvis. We'll find a way of stopping him. Everyone's got a weak spot, even Tony. Um... I can hear the wheels turning. They're not that rusty, are they? I'm going to show Tony Simpson what the locals are like when their feathers are ruffled. Lottery. Don't need to. Ooh, lucky you. For me? Yeah. And don't forget you're having lunch with Jimmy Wright, building contractor, and then you've got to be back at the town hall for two o'clock. Cancel Jimmy Wright. I'm going home for lunch. But you never go home for lunch. Is that a comment or an accusation? It's an observation. Good. Nice to see my assistant's got her wits about her. I'm not your assistant. I'm your personal legal consultant. Of course you are, love. Oh, and uh, check the leasehold price on the cafe for me, will you? What? Not Elvis's calf. Oh, don't you go all social worker on me as well. Yes, Elvis's calf. Yes, I'm thinking of making a bid for the lease. And no, I don't give her monkeys. Ciao. the legal profession. Oh, I'm still trying to convince my boss that I'm not an office dog's body. 
Do you want a coffee with that sandwich you haven't yet bought? Tony never goes home for lunch, and there was just something different about him. Small moustache and a ghost Hmm. I think he only does that in private. Hmm. I just saw him going into a lingerie shop. Obviously after a new bra. Perhaps he needs some extra uplift. Or maybe he's met someone. Or why keep it a secret? Perhaps she's married. Or maybe it's a man. And now that really would put the cat among the pigeons. No, no, no. <laughs> mm. What's he up to today? Mm. Got a meeting at two o'clock at the town hall. I could wait for him after that. And you let me know if he does anything else about the cat. Right. We both know you're here for my wit, charm, devastating insight into the nature of human existence, right? Right. So don't go and spoil it by expecting me to act as unpaid spy on my employer. Now, I do care about the calf, but this is my job, right? Right. And my lunch break ended two minutes ago. Mm. I'm gone. You said married. What? Well, I asked why I'd keep it a secret if he'd met someone, and you said... Oh, perhaps she's married. I think I know who she's married to. Tony. Excuse me, sir. You're a bit early, aren't you? The budget meeting's not till tomorrow. <laughs> I came to see you. Oh, yeah? You're making a big mistake about the calf. So you're a business advisor now, are you? I'm not talking about business. No, no. You're probably going to talk garbage. Well, what is it with you? <sighs> I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that my dad worked for the council all his life for peanuts and had nothing to show for it but a heart condition and a tacky watch. And now I run the place. Maybe it's the fact that whenever I'm told not to do something, I automatically want to do the opposite. Maybe it's the fact that I'm just cleverer than most people I meet. Take your pick. You're all sweetness and light, Simpson. Well, if you do get the calf, then no one will come. So don't do it. Just try and stop me. Watch this space. Nichols. It isn't the proverbial bad penny. No, nope, the reformed woman. So that's why Tony wanted the cafe. I can just see you swanning around in a liberty blouse, doling out overpriced plonk. I'd love to stay and trade insults with you, but I've got more interesting things to do, like emptying the dishwasher. Bye, Mike. Piece part two or your laundry list? <laughs> a groundbreaking article for the parish mag. I want everyone to protest at Simpson buying the calf. That's strong stuff, every word alive also. The ink is over the top. The stronger the better, keep it up. I blame Holly, you know. She comes back and Tony Simpson is charging through people's lives like a mad bull on heat. doing here? It's simple. I came back to square things with Tony. Just to apologise for everything, that's all. Then I was going. Why haven't you left then? Because it's still there. That bit of magic that got us together in the first place. So, we're an item again. And this time it's gonna work. I'm gonna make it work. I'm sure you will. You always had a way of getting what you wanted, like the time you took my boyfriend, remember? Derek. David. Well, plenty of time to chat about the past. You and I'll be seeing a lot of each other. No one in Bridehaven is going to say I came back to fleece Tony or just resume a cushy life. I'm going to work. Where? Here. I want to know the business inside out. It's going to be a perfect partnership as well as a perfect marriage. And you're going to teach me everything I need to know. How's that boy of yours, Jason? Jake. And, oh, he's just fine. I want to work with you. I haven't done nothing. I only want a coffee. Uh, 
I know you prefer the direct approach. So, I think you should go and see your mother. Elvis, get off my case. Watch my lips. You will go and see your mother. Look, I'll go when I'm ready. When I say. All heart, aren't you? Listen, I could get violent. But I'm not going to. I've been to see your mom. She really likes the present you left her. But the truth is, she'd rather see you. She needs to see you. I take this pregnant pause to mean a yes. Just gonna sit there. How's your dad? He's all right. <laughs> and they say the art of conversation is dead. They didn't mention rigor mortis had set in as well. Look, Jason, I know it's hard to talk, but it means a lot to me that you're here. That I can see you, so just talk to me, please. What about? You, me. Your mates, the weather, I don't know. Just talk to me about something. Should be me. What? Here, it should be me. I was the one who done the bomb hoax. You shouldn't have to cover up for me. Keep your voice down. Why? <laughs> OK, look. Let's just start again. You've just come in. And I'm pleased to see you. And we'll take it from there. All right? All right. Repairs to four-wheel drive, which I understand you maintain with public money, but also run for private use. £3.50 for yacht varnish, which I suspect was also for private use. And perhaps you can explain how, now that there are two of you, the work hasn't covered more efficiently. Well, for example, those two cabin cruisers have been moored for two days. Now, I presume you've checked their licenses. Well, if you read the logbook properly, you'd know I had. It's a mess. You'd fail a GCSE in double-entry bookkeeping. <laughs> now, you see, if a full-time assistant doesn't increase efficiency, then we have to consider whether or not we need an assistant at all. Steve is a good worker and the accounts are fine. You're just nitpicking because you're out to impress people. Maybe someone in particular. Mr. Nichols, Mike, I don't think you're serving your own best interests here. Well, funny, I thought I was supposed to be serving the community's interests. I think that probably concludes business on the Harbour Master's annual budget report. Annual business? No, we're moving on then. Don't worry. <sighs> Easy for you to say. I'm about to have my job chucked. We may not be chartered accountants, but we're not crooks either, they know that. They want paperwork, we'll give them paperwork. And a detailed list of all your duties. And we'll take him on. All of them, if we have to. <laughs> Who's we? Me, you and Leah? <laughs> you never helped me when I had a cause. That was a fake. You made it all up, George. This is for real. Well, I'm not convinced. I mean, give me three good reasons why I should sign this. One everybody else is. Two, if the cafe goes, there'll be nowhere for you to get your bacon sandwich. Three, Simpson is a heartless cash register with pound signs where his eyes should be. Evening, everyone. We're celebrating. So we'd like a bottle of your finest champagne, please. Which I suppose means a bottle of your only champagne. <laughs> 
You mean he actually came to the house snooping around? Who does he think he is? The harbour master. <laughs> <laughs> what did he want? Nothing really. That weirdo aunt of his was there. Oh, they're all at it. They must think it's open season on me. Did he, um. You know, did he. Did he make improper suggestions <laughs> to me? No, no. Oh, it's just he does that integrity thing, you know? It makes me puke. Tony, it's all right. I'm here. We're together. I know, sorry. It's just. Oh, it gets to me sometimes, you know? Look, Paul, I am. Um... Here. Oh. Well, it's like a second wedding ring. It's big. <laughs> Tony, you shouldn't. Oh, it's all right. It's insured. I love you so much, Holly. Everything seems complete now that you're here. Anything wrong? Cash wages list. I know it was here. I took it. I wanted to familiarise myself with who gets what and when. All right? Of course. Maybe you could have told me. If you'd been here first thing, I would have. Checking permits, beach patrol, licence inquiries. Anything else I should tell the committee about me? No, it's fine. It's all in Hello, Jake. Hi. Stanley shouldn't have it if you want. Oh, thank you. Stanley's on the clear. Oh, oh, yeah, I can see the likeness now. Yeah, ugly looking bunch, aren't they? Well, if they're under the sea, they can't get to you anymore, can they? No. Well, I gotta go. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> There's a letter here from Miss Francine Peters. There's no return address. Stamp Newcastle. I'll take it. Oh, it's all right. I can deal with it. I said I'll take it. Thanks. Should we go? Oh, yeah. My favourite restaurant. For someone called Francine Peters. Ollie insisted on having it. She should probably just let you know who's boss. Perhaps. But within a few days, she's got this incredible amount of power. She's joint signatory on all his business accounts, and she's got access to details on all his local dealings. Well, she was always a fast mover with men and money. Keep an eye on her. Maybe Tony's got some dodgy deal going on and she's helping him. Maybe. But, Mike, this is difficult for me, this job. You know, the fact that Tony's paying for my course. I don't want them jeopardised. Point taken. distribute the casual labour wages this week. It'll save Tony a lot of driving. But it's £8,000. Yeah, I'll see to it. Just leave it in the safe. What's the matter? No, no, it's just I, I didn't realise that you were a joint signatory on the cheques and the accounts. Two things. First of all, your position is safe. Tony's got fingers in so many pies, there'll be enough work for you twice over. So I'm no threat. Secondly, I'm not doing this so I can rip him off. We're in love, Jane. I've already screwed him up once. Only a queen bitch would do it twice. So this is the real thing, then? I thought I'd lost him. I was a stupid, selfish cow. Of course, the money, the car, the house all helps. But at the center of it all is Tony.
Are you Debbie? Yeah. You want to go, or are you just admiring the view? Well, the view's very nice. I prefer my boats on water. I feel I'm getting somewhere. Perhaps you are getting somewhere. What can I do for you? Well, just some information, really. You knew Holly Simpson's personal trainer? Holly's back out here. Yeah, yeah, when she left with this... Sergey. Good at pumping iron, but never a candidate for mastermind. All muscle and tattoos. Well, do you know what they did while they were away? If you're a big boy, can't you guess? Bet it wasn't tiddlywinks. Yeah, how did they make a living? Who knows? Track farming? Teach origami? Do you know where they went? Up north. Newcastle, I think. Is that all you know? No. But it's all I know about them. All right, thanks. If you need a workout, let me know. I'm a good trainer myself. Oh, Holly moved my desk. I'm over here now. All right. Well, I've asked around. Mm -hmm. All I found out is that she went to Newcastle. Where that letter came from. Yeah. So that, that may be just a coincidence. Mike, I really want you to stop this snooping on Holly. It's making me feel like a heel. And anyway, I'm starting to think that she's genuine. She's doing so much. Well, I'm playing with Tony's money. It's their money. Just drop it. Well, I'm only curious. Nosy. Right, subject closed. And, um... I'm really sorry, but Tony's put in a formal offer for the cafe and it's been accepted, but you didn't hear it from me. I just popped in. Enjoying the work here? Great. Found my niche at last. Good. Is this the sort of thing you did while you were... Playing with my personal trainer? No, Mike. Let's just say it's none of your business. If Tony rings, tell him I'm checking out the development site near Whiteley. And I suggest you don't come to the office. Tony would think it was inappropriate. If you're desperate to see Jane, do it after work. No offence. Ouch. Well, you were a bit heavy-handed. All right, well, I lack any subtlety. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that. La Mexican evening tomorrow, all part of the campaign to save the cafe. Yeah, well, Elvis needs all the help he can get. Tony practically owns the place already. We'll show him. It's going to be a great party. Tacos, red hot chili peppers, tequila, and highly suggestive dancing. The hat helps me cook. What hat? If you want to help the ambiance, there's a couple of castanets on the sideboard. Better still, come along and bring Jane. Nothing like a red hot chili for the overly cautious Nobida. It's Holly I'm concerned about. Not romantically, I hope. Unless you've had your survival instinct surgically removed. No, something's going on. She's up to something. All I have are fragments. Scattered o'er the sky. It's Alexander Pope. Come on, let's go surfing. It would help to have a description. Yeah, it was just the name Francine Peters. That's all I got from Jane. Jane? You liaising with Jane? OK. Let's try a search for missing persons. In the Newcastle area. No. OK. Police wanted lists. No, nothing. At least nothing that they're making public. Newspapers? All right. But there won't be an index, you know. It'll just be a case of bums on seats. Or rather, a bum on a seat and scrolling through. Good luck. I'll get you a copy. Thank you.
Auntie. Mm -hmm. Hey, look. Well, well. So that's who Francine Peters is. It's an old photo. Oh, just very sort of focus. No, no. So what do we do now, apart from tell the police? All right, I think I'm going to have a heart-to-heart -heart with my old mate, Tony Simpson. This had better be good. I've got something important on this evening. I'm asking you one last time, back off. Right, Steve's a good worker and the cafe belongs to Elvis. I'm asking you, Tony. That's what I like to hear. Groveling. Music to my ears. Right. Now, I didn't want to be the one I have to tell you this, but the love of your life is on the run. <laughs> you must be desperate. Now, insurance scam in Newcastle, about 30 grand. She's called herself Francine Peters, the police are looking for. I think she's about to rip you off and all. It's only a matter of time before they find her. You're a liar. She's got access to all your accounts, right? She started handling the wages and investments, right? But wake up, Simpson. Go and phone your bank manager. Go on. Go on, phone him. Can't do it, can you? Don't you dare try and bluff me into playing games. You say anything like that again and I'll sue you. It's not over yet. Put me through to the manager. It's Tony Simpson. Barry, Tony, listen. Has any money been withdrawn in the last couple of days that I didn't personally authorise? How much? No, no, I don't want you to do anything. Thanks. Dave? Yes, sir. Go to that funny little delicatessen place in White Bay. Right you are. I've got some serious cooking to do. Working late? Very diligent. Yeah. Just tidying up a few loose hands. I thought there might have been a power cut, but it must have been temporary. Yeah. Are these for me? Of course. To go with the meal. What meal? That I've prepared for us at home. Something a bit special. Champagne, candlelight. I don't need an excuse to spoil you, do I? Of course not, no. Tony, look, I was going to sort out the wages and everything and then have an early night. Why don't you... It's all taken care of. Everything's taken care of. Carry your bags, Mum? No. No. Big, strong girl like me. Shall we? Yeah. 
try one of these starters. Seafood, crystallized ginger, and a herb sauce. I call them love's delight. Go on, tuck in. Tony, maybe we should do this another evening. Live every day as if it was your last. Because one day, it's going to be true. To us. I can't imagine loving anyone as much as I love you, Holly. Your coming back has been the best thing that could have happened to me. Me too. I was thinking, maybe we could have a second honeymoon. Tahiti or somewhere, huh? Sounds nice. Tony, I... Uh, What's wrong? Won't be a second love. I think. Here. Try one of these stuffed olives. Uh, Tony, I'm not really. You're not hungry. Let's go for a drive. It's all right, all. Nothing's going to happen. I love you. Come on. Chop, chop. Don't forget your bags. Uh, no, uh, not that way, not that, the back way. You drive. Pull over here. Drive to Heathrow, fast. Go straight to Terminal 4, check in gate 52 for a flight for Mexico City. After that, you're on your own. Here. Enough for a few bottles of tequila and a change of identity. There's Dave, punctual as ever. Tony, I... I... Don't say anything. Just give us a kiss. Tony, I did all this because... I don't know why. Because you have to. Because you can't help yourself. I don't know. Maybe it's the danger. Maybe the grass is always greener. I knew you were going to go. And I knew you were going to try and rip me off. And it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. I had a couple of days, didn't I? Tony, we've got enough for two. Tony. Mr. Simpson, I... Uh... You usually call me Tony, Cyril. 
Especially when I'm writing out those big, fat, juicy checks for the Police Federation Widows Fund, the Police Athletics Association. We've been working with Newcastle colleagues regarding the activities of someone called Francine Peters. Fraud, theft, obtaining money and goods under false pretenses. And it's my wife, Holly. I only just found out myself a while ago. And no, I don't know her whereabouts. I'll fully reimburse anyone who's lost money. If they contact my lawyer, I'll set them straight. Pleased? No. No, I would be if it was you. Well, you're not, are you? Everyone else will be delighted. Tony Simpson's finally got a right kick up the backside. Always knew she'd make a mug of him. What did you see in her? She made me feel alive. When I was with her, I felt like I was a better person than I am. Everything looked bigger, brighter. Things seemed to mean something. I'd have given it all up for her, you know. The lot. I'd trade one night with Holly for all the dosh in Monte Carlo, and then some. Well, maybe we should envy you. I've never loved anyone that much. Anyway. It'll be all right tomorrow, the council meeting. The accounts, Steve's job. Well, thank you. No, don't thank me. I just haven't got the heart for it at the moment. But I'll tell you this, Nichols. You ever repeat a word of what I just said about Holly to anyone, and I'll have you hammered into the ground like a tent peg. Well, no one's ever made me quite such an attractive offer. I don't worry. I won't say anything. It's done, then. It looked like something bad in a butcher's shop. Thanks. Must be allergic to this place. Gossip travels faster than news. I take it the cafe is still mine? Yeah, well, wine bars are notorious for losing money. It would have been bad business. see it from our point of view. The bad publicity that would ensue from your domestic situation. We can't have a mayor like that. It's all right, Stan. I never really wanted to get drunk with a load of old ponces and wear a silly hat anyway. Now, listen. No, you listen. Remember, the real power in this town is where the money is, and that's with me. And if I were you, I'd stop holding your meetings in gents' toilets. People will start talking. 
We can't have a mayor like that, can we? Thinking about publicity. Like your hat. Mum made me wear it. Come on, Pedro. Let's dance. I think she's met her match. He's a handful. <laughs> oh, thanks for helping him. He told me, eventually. Should we, um... Kids have such battles. It'd be all right. You only get one chance, and there are no rules. Part of the money to make up for yourself. But you're doing fine with Jake. Am I? Well, of course you are. You know you are. You're a good mum. Clever woman. The sky's the limit, really, isn't it? The sky's a long way off. I quite like it down here. Yeah, me too. Well, I suppose we should be getting back. Oh, yeah. Better get Jake back. <laughs> right then. Shall we go? Yeah. 